Good to see you again. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the program Off the Press. We take a look at the headlines in the papers with the help of a guest and we try to decipher what's um, underlying it. I have uh, legal practitioner Jide Ologu joining us via Skype. Jide, good morning. Morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you too. Okay, let's kick things off with the Nation newspaper. Uh, the big one here is interstate travel ban, curfew to continue for two weeks. Uh, it has two riders. Nation not ripe for end of lockdown, says Buhari. Schools, worship centers, airports to remain shot. That's um, uh, what the implication of that is. And then there's something a bit on the front page about economic package. You might want to take a look at that as well. At the top of the paper, we have oh, 1,180 ASU members fail BVN test. What's that about? Uh, teachers underpay tax? Hmm. Udogu, Supreme Court verdict shocking, says Shege, uh, six and six callous release. When you have money, you get more sands on your case. That's it on your screen now. Supreme Court verdict shocking, says Shege. And then we have six sands, sick callous release. He's employed them to help get him off uh, the hook. Okay, let's uh, see the other one. Akira Dolu to reopen worship centers. Governor clerics to meet. Oshemwale inaugurates Bulama as APC National Secretary. For those that follow politics in this country, you know, that was quite a bit of an issue just before the coronavirus pandemic came upon us and uh, got everybody um, distracted. Okay, the economic package I mentioned is also there for you. Reduction of inter interest rate from 9% to 5% for CBN intervention facilities. Those are some of the things captured in there. Uh, um, underneath the picture of uh, people wearing face masks, we have uh, CBN NNPC to spend 1 billion naira on returnee quarantine. Uh, that's uh, the big news coming out for the presidential task force and COVID-19 briefing uh, from yesterday. A lot of, of the returnees, I'm sure, will be very excited about this. Let's get Jide. Jide, let's start with the CBN and NNPC collaboration to ease the burdens of these Nigerians that are returning home. That is a very brilliant one because many were worried why the government was trying to shy away from the responsibility of caring for the returnees. And whether you make reference to CBN or NNPC, these are parastatals of the government. You know, there is something the making noise um, at the background, something like air or something. Could you adjust it? I said. Okay that it's a great development that the CBN and NNPC is coming in to handle the care of the returnees because, I mean, these are parastatals of the federal government and it is a responsibility that the federal government should bear. And um, if you ask me, the NNPC is a huge source of revenue for the country and the CBN is the custodian of revenue also. So they should be able to come together to build the government and show the government as being responsible towards the people. Okay, the big one on the front page is the interstate travel ban. Um, curfew still in place to continue for two weeks. Some are saying that it's not even um, very effective. So what's the point? Is it uh, just being an official statement or it's actually going to have some end result um, when the two weeks is over? What's your perception um, of these responses? It's a, it's a matter of mixed feelings. It's been effective in some quarters. I have, in fact, yesterday I had to commend the policemen at the checking point between Ogun State and Lagos State because they had to detain some vehicles where they were parking more than the prescribed number of passengers and they had to check them out of the road to detain them. And I, I really commended them. But you see, by and large, there are other issues. For example, those who are held in the curfew in the night, some of them are attacked by armed robbers. And I'm talking specifically about the Long Bridge 
coming into Lagos right now. And of course, it's been ineffective in the sense that some of the officials have been compromised. So people still move within the state, but some states have effectively controlled their environment. You know, recently we read about the case of Cross River State, where the governor had to send back some Almanjiris, uh, Professor Benedict Ayade, who wanted to come into Calabar. And we've seen also in River State how the governor has said no, and you cannot bring in people who probably would have tested positive to COVID-19 into an environment. And you can see that even in the northern uh, part of the country, you talk of Kaduna, Nasarawa, Niger State, there has been issues of repatriation of Almanjiri. So by and large, in trying to check the spread of this coronavirus in the country, the, the government is trying. But generally speaking, it has not given the level of effectiveness that is expected. And that's why the government is saying, okay, we are going to extend it. But perhaps the government should intensify efforts on testing and, of course, trying to make sure that we find a quick solution to managing this COVID-19 uh, issue because we have been warned by the World Health Organization that it may not go away in a hurry. In fact, the, the chairman of the uh, presidential tax force on COVID-19 has also insinuated that this COVID-19 may be with us for another two years. Whatever the case may be, we may have to live with this reality. It's now how we manage it. And that is why I appreciate the fact that the government is still preaching the wearing of nose and face masks in public places. If you must go out, then the social distancing and, of course, the hygiene that we need to maintain. And if we uh, begin to make this uh, the new way of life, perhaps we reduce the casualties. By and large, we have our issues with us, whether it's health, economic or social, before the arrival of COVID-19 because people still die from other ailments. And we expect that the government will now focus on enhancing the capacity of the health sector in the country, particularly when it is no longer fashionable to travel abroad for treatment. So if we put all this together, we'll be dealing with substantial, uh, substantive issues rather than palliatives. All right, let's uh, take a tiny detail from the COVID-19 uh, situation. It's just what we have, but there is a tiny detail we can take this morning, and it has to do with the Supreme Court verdict on the matter that affects uh, former governor of Abia State, Oji Uzo Kalo. Um, we understand now that he has engaged the services of six senior advocates of Nigeria uh, to take on his case. What's your, um, I mean, six cents? Is that a bit of an overkill? You know, I can assure you that the Supreme Court I cannot be intimidated by the number of lawyers you bring to court. But you really have to prove your case. And I think that is what uh, we should focus on here. And I've said is uh, the Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. So... And um, let's, let's wait and see how it goes. But the man that was jointly accused with uh, uh, go former Governor Oji, a retrial has been ordered in his own case. Let's take a look at the Nigerian Tribune now. Uh, the big one here is uh, PTF guidelines on COVID-19, high burden states to get precision lockdown. I'll take that again. High burden states to get precision lockdown. Um, Canus lockdown stays for another two weeks. But I, I saw, a, I took a quick look this morning and I saw a story about the uh, governor, Ganduje, making an adjustment um, to the lockdown that was issued by the president. Uh, Jide, are you back on? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay, so let's, let's start with that story. Uh, the high, still on the lockdown um, extension. There's something about the Kanu State Governor adjusting the presidential directive on the lockdown uh, to ease uh, for worship for people. Uh, that's one. There's another um, um, rider to the story on the Tribune that says three states account for 35% uh, of deaths and then restriction to remain for two more weeks. I want to 
53% of the debts, I beg your pardon. You see details on page three of the paper. So could you talk to us about this restriction? On the one hand, the president is given one order, uh, lockdown kind of states, the numbers are coming up, and the governor, in his wisdom, is deciding to adjust, adjust that uh, directive from the presidency to suit the peculiar needs of his people. I just want to get your perspective on that. The governor of Kano State is the number one citizen. He is closer to his people than the president. So, and of course, he manages the economy and the social life of the state. So he should be able to know what will best suit his own, uh, the people under his constituency. But, but isn't it worrying that, I mean, the co in communication is key. This information could have been communicated to the president, so he will issue the kind of directive that will suit the people on the advice of the governor, then having a situation where the president issues an order and then the state governor modifies it. Um, well, I mean... I, I'm, I'm not one of those that is surprised by the communication gap in Nigeria. We've, we've come to live with it. You see, recall also, and I was going to mention that, that Ogun State also deviated a bit and said they were not willing to enforce the lockdown when the president declared his own, that they needed to extend by another week to make their people prepare. So when you talk about communication... There is need for synergy. And I think COVID-19 is making the Nigerian government to move in that direction. And if we emphasize working together as in, in synergy, this country will develop faster than we think it should. Because right now, you must have observed also that the governors are meeting the president by teleconference and things and discussing this health issue that is plaguing everyone. So we expect more of interaction between the states and the federal government. And by and large, the states are beginning to enjoy the leverage of prominence in taking decisions in their, in their communities. And of, you won't blame them because whether we like it or not, the money that the states should have access to from the federal government is dwindling. Look at what uh, our oil is going through in the global market. So there is a global economic downturn and each state governor must rise up to the occasion. All right, you know, let's take on um, Oshomale's um, outsmart APC in Bulama, um, swears in uh, Bulama as uh, national secretary. That's also on the uh, Tribune News, Nigerian Tribune. I'll take that again. Oshomale outsmarts APC govs, swears in Bulama as national secretary. Uh, that's one thing I would like your thoughts on, as well as the federal government accuses Vasitas of presenting dead staff for salary payment, um, slams ASU for underpaid payee tax. Uh, let's start with the uh, Bulama as the national um, secretary of the APC. I, I won't say that Oshemole did our smart APC. Is the, <laughs> well, the, the, as we speak the now, he's the chairman it, it of, of the party and he's expected to have an influence, particularly on decisions. And if some party big wigs are not satisfied with that, they know what to do, including taking some legal actions. All right. So it's all politics. But for some of us, our concern has gone beyond the in house party politics, it's gone to the extent of having them deliver on good governance and satisfying the needs of the people in terms of fulfilling electoral promises. So uh, if APC is not comfortable with this, APC knows what to do. And um, knowing the man himself, Oshio Mole, who he is, is a dogged fighter, all right? So and I've said it once, that I think he enjoys Tom. But let's see how the APC party we react or respond to this, as the case may be. Uh, um, your thoughts on the accusation uh, against universities, dead staff for salaries in 2020? Yeah, recently, recently also, the federal government appointed, uh, nominated a dead man for position, and we've had that in the past. So I think the government should just review their system generally. But we need to migrate from running a system that does not emphasize consequences. So... If we are alleging that we have, we still have ghost workers, despite the technology we are introducing, then the EFCC is there, the ICPC is there, 
empowered by law to carry on thorough investigation and to embark on diligent prosecution. And we expect that there will be a committed judiciary to adjudicate on the matter. And those are the three key elements in the criminal justice value chain. So, and I have said it, and I'm echoing it this morning, that if you look at Section 15, Subsection 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, it stipulates that the state shall abolish corruption and all forms of uh, abuse of office. So the government has the responsibility to sanitize the environment. And one of the key approaches is, is, is to ensure that we minimize crime. So if these allegations are there, it's not just enough for us to read about them. Go after them. If you are talking about university lecturers, you can know the universities that are presented uh, that have presented ghost okay. workers receiving salaries, and you can go after them. We still have the, the acting chairman of EFCC. We still have these parastatals representing the government. All right, um, Barista. <laughs> Yeah, let's, mm. let's uh, see what we can do with the Punch newspaper now. I'm just going to try and read as many headlines as I can, and then you take your pick of the one that you want to speak on. Uh, the big one on the front page um, says, Lagos Kanu Bonu account for 52% COVID-19 debts. That's uh, something uh, from the federal government. Details is on page 2 and 22 of the paper. And Benita, you have a couple of writers to the story, three actually. At the top of the paper, just above the masthead, we have PhD scandal. On overrules board, ICPC, others demoted FIIRO boss, reinstatement. And then we have uh, FG quarantines British aircraft pilots to apply full sanctions. The details of that story is on page uh, 21 after the paper. Uh, the figures in Nigeria, COVID-19 update just beside the um, uh, punch, the masthead. Okay, let's see other headlines. Uh, before, okay, let's go to the bottom and look at this uh, police parade couple or your cleric's age over twins abduction. Uh, that story made the rounds a lot over the weekend. Uh, federal Pam Sec queried for buying uncompleted building at seven billion naira. Initially, I thought that story was about a personal building, but it still has to do with uh, due process and all of that. Uh, security guard kills Lagos driver with tear gas. A journalist detained 12 days for criticizing Lai Mohammed. That's uh, the CDHR um, there on page uh, 11 of the paper. Uh, more stories. A Chinese medical team concludes assignment stranded because there is no flight. That's the China company speaking. All right, uh, Jude. Yeah, let's take it from the stranded Chinese. I think it's quite ridiculous. There was aircraft to bring them into the country, and they have operated under the cloud because it's not clear to Nigerians what exactly they came to do. In fact, there are still questions that are they all medical doctors or not, but I leave that to the trust capital of the government. And there is a and tone now, I read in the papers, I think that was uh, yesterday or so, of the company um, explaining that uh, the medical team came to give them, um, equip their employees and teach them safety measures. They have virtual interaction with uh, federal government uh, ministries on um, but, what, but, but what at the time, the federal government also told us that they were coming in to help set up molecular laboratories. And so who is owning wow. them now? Is it the company or the government? So, well, the federal government has disowned. Now. They said they didn't invite them, as we know. And uh, the company has said, yes, they are here in Nigeria on their invitation. So, yeah, you, you have a point there. Okay. They can always find an aircraft to move them back if they want to go back. And um, let's talk about the 53% of deaths. Of course, I'm not surprised about that. Let's start with Lagos. You know that Lagos is even more than a state. Lagos is like a whole country. If you look at the population of about 20 million and the fact that the inability to sustain the lockdown by not being able to provide adequate palliatives made people to start coming out again, you know, saddled again with <clears throat> the challenging healthcare system. And you talk about the northern part of the country. Initially, some states like Kano and uh, some other states denied the connection of death to COVID-19. But eventually, some of them needed to own up. But I have also said, apart from COVID-19, there are other issues leading to, you know, mysterious death in the north. You cannot live in a society 
where bandits are in charge, where kidnappers are on rampage, where insurgents are operating, and not have high blood pressure, and not be subject to different kinds of ailments. And you also, you know, rope that with the fact that medical facilities are not available. I'm still waiting for a Nigerian to answer me on why I should not be shocked that the chief of staff to my president died perhaps because there was no adequate medical facility to manage his health in the federal capital territory. So Nigeria needs to wake up and put things in place. You know, health is wealth. So we must ensure that we have a secured environment, that we give people peace of mind. We must ensure also that we come up with proactive solutions to challenges. This may not be the last pandemic that we visit the world. How are we going to be in five years' time, in 10 years' time? Are we still going to be directing our finances to, uh, you know, running recurrent expenditure without investing or capital expenditure? Will my country remain without electricity that is reliable in another five years? These are critical issues we should be looking at. And okay. you know that even before now, the life expectancy in Nigeria is something else. You see, so those, those are the issues. And um, talking about the flights from the UK to Nigeria, it's again how we implement our laws. So All if right. they think that the example on our directives and laws, why not? But if we slam them with the appropriate consequences, they will respect us. Because I know in the UK, in the US, they don't joke with their own laws. So we need to rise up to the occasion in every area. And talking about... All right, let, let's see if we can go quickly to cut some headlines from this day newspaper as well. Um, I, I know okay. we have um, less than uh, five minutes to go. Uh, this day okay. has um, the lockdown also captured on the front page. Uh, there you have it, uh, lock extension, um, nationwide curfew, canoe lockdown uh, by two weeks. Um, at the top of the masthead, we see oil price hits at $34, one month high as restrictions ease. And then uh, some good news, even amid uh, COVID-19. Reddington performs first complex open heart surgery in Nigeria. Patient apparently well, hails Nigerian doctors. Uh, that's um, a cherry news this morning. Um, still on this day newspaper, Govs tackle FG over NLNG dividends. And then we have uh, PNID, U.S. Courts, Grant FG access to hedge funds document. Take your pick, um, GD. You know, let's talk about the lockdown, which is a trending issue now. Mm -hmm. And um, I must say that we need to review the need for us not to lock down our economy also. Because before now, we already had a vulnerable economy and see how we can manage this situation to allow people to engage their businesses and add value to the economy of the nation. I know that in the first one month of the lockdown, Nigeria claimed to have lost about 20 billion naira. So you can imagine if that is sustained. And we thank God that the oil is gaining uh, an uprising in the global market right now. So we need to get serious. And I want to recommend this morning in managing this COVID-19 pandemic, the beautiful scenario in Cross River State. In fact, recently, the NCDC visited the state and decided to hail uh, Professor Benedict Ayade as the COVID-19 champion in Africa. You see, because the man was proactive by engaging the situation right away from January. And as of today, there is no case of COVID-19 in Cross River State, and he has managed the situation effectively. And recall also, he started the production of local nose and mouth masks. So we have several possibilities in Nigeria, not just in Madagascar. And there are several Nigerians who are also coming out to say they can provide solutions to our problems. So I think Africa will begin to move in the direction of greatness when we focus more on locally activated solutions to our challenges so that we don't remain at the mercy of the world organizations. And I just want to say once again that uh, God will continue to help Nigeria. And as we look inwards, again, in diversifying the economy, 
I also want to advise that security is very important. And that's why I'm glad the president has said there should be a direct engagement of the bandits and the criminals in Katsina State at the state of my president. So if we do not deal with the insecurity in this country, then we may have a long dance with poverty. But All right, good government stands that we bring prosperity. Uh, I have some questions popping up in my head, but we are time constrained. So I will say thank you and keep them from another time. <laughs> thank you so thank much for coming on the program. program. We appreciate your time. Bless you. God bless you. God bless Nigeria. God bless you too. And that's it for today. A look at the headlines making the rounds. If you missed out, you can find us on our YouTube uh, page uh, channel on YouTube. Find Plus TV Africa, look for the playlist that is off the press and take a look at some of uh, the thoughts expressed by our guest. Tomorrow is another day. We're back with the papers. Until then, be safe, be well.